Modern roundabouts have become more commonplace in the United States. Mini roundabouts, a smaller version, have been widely implemented in other countries. The Federal Highway Administration has sponsored a research project to investigate mini roundabouts in greater detail and, if found to be beneficial, promote their installation in the United States. Mini roundabouts are characterized by their small central island, which ranges from 16 feet to 45 feet. The fundamental feature of the central island is that it must be traversable, as opposed to traffic circles with raised islands that are implemented as traffic calming techniques in primarily residential areas. Mini roundabouts must have traversable central islands, whereas conventional roundabouts have non-traversable central islands. The overall inscribed diameter, measured from the outside of the travelway to the outside of the mini roundabout, is approximately 50 to 80 feet. Based on initial research and results from Europe, mini roundabouts can be a viable alternative to a conventional two-way stop intersection for certain volume conditions. Moreover, they show greater promise as an option to all-way stop-controlled intersections both three- and four-legged. While it still remains to be shown, many roundabouts may be an alternative to signalized intersections for certain combinations of geometrics and volumes. One of the most attractive aspects of the mini roundabouts is that they could be implemented within the existing paved travelway, without the need for widening at an existing intersection or purchasing additional right-of-way. This makes them very appealing and cost-effective. The size and location of islands should primarily accommodate passenger cars and it is desirable to narrow the approach lanes to 10 feet. For conventional roundabouts, the design is developed to accommodate all vehicle types, including trucks and buses, such that they do not encroach upon the central island. Many roundabouts in general have different design principles. Rather, under certain geometries, it is expected that trucks and buses will have to encroach upon and travel through the central island. This explains why portions or all of the central islands must be traversable. In Europe, many roundabouts have been successfully implemented at the junction of two relatively narrow roadways. Similarly, it is hoped that one location where many roundabouts can be successfully implemented in the United States is at the junction of two 24-foot wide two-lane roadways. This is a simulated view of traffic entering a mini roundabout at the junction of two 24-foot wide roadways. As can be seen, the design is adequate for drivers of passenger vehicles to safely negotiate within the paved travelway. Entering traffic should yield the right-of-way to vehicles already in the mini roundabouts. However, as can be seen, trucks will need to traverse through the central island to successfully make a left turn maneuver. While some variations of mini roundabouts have been implemented in the United States, these designs could be further enhanced by additional changes. One of the objectives of this research is to develop improved guidelines for mini roundabouts in the United States. The central island can be constructed of different materials. One method is to have a raised concrete island. The central island has a sloping-faced concrete outer ring and an inner core composed of brick paver impressions. The desirable maximum rise of the central island is 2 to 3 inches. Another material is colored stamp concrete. Another version is a flush central island composed of thermoplastic materials. For central islands that are built with thermoplastic materials, it is recommended that an anti-skid treatment be applied to prevent slick surfaces for bicyclists and motorcyclists. For flush central islands, additional physical determent boundaries, such as raised pavement markers or rumble strips, are needed to enhance conspicuity and encourage drivers of passenger cars to stay within the circular travelway of the mini roundabout. To further accentuate or at least delineate the central island, conventional raised pavement markers or rumble strips are possible additional treatments that could be added, especially for flush central islands. One of the objectives of the mini roundabouts is to slow traffic down and make drivers conscious of entering traffic. To assist in achieving this objective, flexible posts can be used in the central island. 
Of course, they need to be placed in a location that minimizes their chance of being struck. There are additional design characteristics of a mini roundabout that warrant discussion. The first is the splitter island, which is located on the approach. A raised splitter island is shown here. This research is examining the feasibility of a range of splitter island types. Raised concrete, raised with brick pavers or colored stamped concrete, flush pavement markings with and without flexible posts, and flush with colored stamped concrete, among others. The second characteristic is the S-curve entering the mini roundabout. This is desirable when possible. Pedestrian crosswalks, yield signs, pavement markings, and roundabout signing are all critical traffic control elements in the intersection. This depiction shows a driver's eye view traversing the mini roundabout. Note the roundabout advance warning sign, the keep right sign on the splitter island, and the pedestrian crosswalk signs. This design also featured a flexible curb on the right side to channelize drivers, thereby creating a desirable S-curve and deflection prior to entry. This design also features a fairly flat sloped concrete face for the central island. This is a depiction of another design that features flex posts and pavement markings to create the splitter island. The central island for this design features a flush central island composed of yellow thermoplastic material with rumble strips on the edge of the central island. Four closely spaced flexible posts have been added to the central island. The previous two video clips showed designs for an approach roadway of 36 feet in width. FHWA is very interested if mini roundabouts will work at the junction to two two-lane roads having a roadway width of 24 feet. This clip shows design with a raised splitter island and central island. For this design, flexible tubular posts have been added to the splitter island. Due to the turning path considerations for trucks and buses, nothing is shown on the central island. This design is similar but has a roadway width of 36 feet. As opposed to a design that was shown earlier, there is no S-curve on the approach. The wider splitter islands and larger central island can accommodate flexible posts, which were noticeably absent on the previous design. The last design features rumble strips to further delineate a flush central island and flush splitter islands. In summary, there are a variety of treatments and designs that can be used to create mini roundabouts with relatively low construction costs. It is hoped that through this research, more refined guidance about design parameters for mini roundabouts can be developed. As stated earlier, Many roundabouts could be installed at junctions that are currently two-way or all-way stop-controlled intersections or at selected signal-controlled intersections, depending on volume distributions over the day. This simulation shows a mini roundabout at the junction of two 36-foot roadways. The simulation shows how drivers of passenger cars can go straight or execute a left-turn maneuver around the mini roundabout. It also shows how trucks could travel straight through the roundabout, albeit with a modest encroachment into the central island. One can see how a truck can execute a left-turn maneuver by traversing partially through the central island. Lastly, the video clip shows how trucks can execute a right-turn maneuver. Simulation studies were used to develop a relationship between entering volumes and circulating volumes, similar to relationships shown in the roundabout design guide. The theoretical relationship between entering volume and circulating volume is shown here for a mini roundabout. The capacity for a mini roundabout is only slightly less than the capacity of a conventional single lane roundabout. Simulation results indicate that the capacity is about 1,000 entering and circulating volumes for mini roundabouts at the junction to two 24-foot roadways and 1,200 for two 36-foot roadways. At this time, mini roundabouts may have greater applicability to be effective in the following situations. Roads on which speeds are 35 miles per hour or lower intersections on which the sum of entering volume from all approaches is 1,600 vehicles per hour or lower. 
junctions of two lane roads. Many roundabouts may be more promising at the following locations. Junctions without any nearby commercial entrances, low truck and bus traffic. Many roundabouts may not be appropriate solutions for intersections that have high truck or bus turning volumes. In an effort to learn more about many roundabouts and developed improved guidance on the geometric design and traffic control devices for many roundabouts, the FHWA has sponsored a research study of the many roundabouts. One of the key aspects of the study is to conduct a before versus after evaluation of 10 mini roundabouts. The Federal Highway Administration is looking for partners in this endeavor, specifically up to 10 agencies who are willing to construct a mini roundabout soon at their own cost and make data available to the FHWA for evaluation. The desired data includes crash data before and after implementation. If you would like to participate in this study or desire additional information, please contact Dr. Wei Zhang or Dr. Joe Barrett of the Federal Highway Administration in McLean, Virginia. Thank you.